just a second. Here. Just a minute, I'm not facing any problems here. <clears throat> okay. All right, so today we're gonna start with a new concept in polynomials, which is called a zero of a polynomial. So uh, Hamna, have you heard of this before? Zero of a polynomial? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, can you explain it in your own words? Yes. It's okay, just whatever you've heard of it. Whatever you think it means. Ma'am, every real number is a zero of the zero polynomial. Okay. All right. But what is a zero? What what do you, what do we mean by zero of a polynomial? What is this? Any clues? Yes, Amna. So right now it's just you in the classroom, so you don't have to be um, shy or hesitant or anything. You can just be free and answer whatever you think about it. Yes. <clears throat> okay. It's okay if you don't know about it. So, um, so how about we take a polynomial, let's say, um, yeah, let's say five x square. Okay, and please write this down as well simultaneously. Five x square minus three x plus seven. So this is a polynomial, and let's call this, um, let's call this p of x. Okay. So now I want you to find the value of P of X. Listen carefully. Find the value of P of X at X is equal to one. Yeah. So like do that quickly and let me know what the answer is. Yes, Amna? Are you there, Amna? Um, am I audible? Uh, Amna, am I audible to you? You can just answer with a yes or a no. Am I audible to you, Hamna?
okay hum na you can like you can unmute yourself and answer because uh, i'm not able to see the chat box over here so all right just a second just give me a second <clears throat> Just give me a minute. Okay. so uh, you said the answer is what did you say in this check the chat box okay so you said the answer is 9 well so this is 5 minus 3 plus 7 which is 2 plus 7 which is 9 right oops sorry <clears throat> so 2 plus 7 which is 9 okay now um let's take a look at <clears throat> let's take a look at another example um let's take a look at this p of x is equal to x minus 1 okay now uh, humna could you please tell me what will be the value of this polynomial or let me just rename it okay um let me just call it q of x because that would be confusing so if i have q of x and q of x is this it is x is equal to 1 Sorry, q of x is equal to x minus one, and I want you to find the value of this at the point or the value of this when x is equal to one. So when x is is equal to one, what does q of x become? <clears throat> okay zero right so q of x becomes zero at x is equal to 1 right so what we say is so basically the value of x at which this polynomial becomes equal to 0 the value of this polynomial becomes 0 that value of x is called the zero of the polynomial <clears throat> okay so like how about if i give you something x is equal to 2 so humna can you tell me is 2 is the number 2 a zero of this polynomial yes or no <clears throat> yeah come on no ma'am no it's not okay because q of 2 and just a second let me i just made a tiny mistake over here okay so q of 1 over here q of 2 is equal to 2 minus 1 so this is equal to 1 which is not zero so 2 is not a zero of the polynomial <clears throat> so um Hanna, did you understand what zero of the polynomial means? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Hanna, could you please explain that to Mridula because she just joined us? Could you explain that to her? It's okay, even if you're not one hundred percent right. Totally fine. I will 
correct you later on. Just just try to explain it to her. Yes. Yes, Hamna, start. Ma'am, when the value of x is, I mean, hmm. if it, if the value of x can make the equation zero, then it is uh, zero of the polynomial. Very good, exactly. And you stated it very precisely, like even more precisely than I did. So. Once again, Hamna, could you elaborate on that just a little bit? And let me see if I can allow you to share, uh, to write on the screen. Um, just a sec. I don't know if you're able to write on the screen. Are you able to write on the screen? No, ma'am. We are not. Okay, let me check um, how I can change that. Um, so I don't know how to change that over here. Wait. Let me start. Okay, um, in any case, Hamna, whatever you just said, you, the, the statement that you stated, could you um, explain that? Could you elaborate on that? And then like whatever you dictate, if you're dictating an equation, then I will just write it down. Um, for it to be easier from Ridula. So can you just explain it, elaborate a little bit, like give examples or something, so as to explain it to Ridula. Yeah. Yes, Amna? Um, Hamna, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, zero of a polynomial. Start. Yes. When the... Mm -hmm. And like, uh, for example, if P is equal to... Okay x minus one okay then and x is equal to one then x minus then x one x minus one is equal to zero so right okay. so that's why the x is zero of the polynomial Okay, so when x is equal to 1, you are saying p of x becomes 0. Therefore, x is equal to 1, or we can say that, therefore, 1 is a 0 of the polynomial. Okay, um, so the way that you stated it in the first, uh, the first time, you said that the value of x, the value of x at which our polynomial becomes 0, that value is called zero of the polynomial. So once again, Vidula, um, I will just restate it for you. So if we have, let me just give you another example. If we have, let's say p of x is equal to x plus five. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna, <clears throat> so yeah, x plus five. And I'm saying that the value of x, the value of x at which the whole equation turns zero, 
uh, Hamna, what do you think the value of x will be at which the whole equation turns zero? Okay, no problem if you don't know that. So, um, Rizula, once again, um, let's just go back to the first slide. So, in the previous class, if you remember, um, okay, Rizula, can you just confirm if uh, I'm, I'm audible to you clearly? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay. So, in the previous class, we saw a few examples where we had, okay, Px is equal to something. All right, it was a polynomial. And we said, okay, find the value of this polynomial when x is equal to a particular number. So you guys did that pretty well. And um, so we got an answer. We got a number in the end, right? Now what we're doing is we're saying that, okay, over here, the end result was nine. But if I have, if I'm giving you a polynomial, and we have a value of x, at that value, my polynomial is uh, coming out to be zero, then this value at which the polynomial came out to be zero, right, this value, that is known as the zero of the polynomial. So we're just taking a few more examples for that. So we're saying that, well, in this case, if we see, okay, Mridula, in this case, what happens if I have x is equal to, um, let's say, 0. Okay, not, not 0. Let's say x is equal to 1. So what does p of 1 become? Let me just write it. What does p of 1 become? Yes? Ma'am, we put the value of, in, in the equation, we put the value of x is 1. And ma'am, we, uh, we sum 5 in 1. And ma'am, the answer is 6. Very good. So the answer is 6. So P of 1 is 6. Um, what about P of 0? The polynom value of polynomial when x is 0? Then 5. Very good. So it is equal to 5. Right? <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. What about, um, let's say, P of minus 3. Yeah, what about P of minus 3, Mridula? I'm positive 2. Very good. Just a second. Okay, so it is positive 2. What about P of minus 5? I'm at 0. It is 0, right? So it is 0. So the, the point being here, at the at which value of x are we getting p as 0? And over here, the value of x at which we are getting p of x as 0, over here x is equal to minus 5. So we say that x is equal to minus 5 is the 0 of this polynomial. So we are saying that minus 5 is a 0 of p of x. Is that clear, Mridula? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the value of x at which the polynomial becomes zero, that is known as the zero of the polynomial. So let's move on. Okay. Um, now, if I give you a polynomial, let's say p of x is equal to x plus two. So what do you think is going to be the zero of this polynomial or in, another, in other words, at which value of x will this polynomial come out to be zero? Minus two. Minus two. Very good, Mridula. So minus two is the zero of this polynomial. Uh, Hamna, if I, what about plus two? Is this a zero of the polynomial? No, ma'am. The answer would be 4. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's take a few more examples. <clears throat> How about the polynomial Q of, let's say, Y, I'm going to change the variable, Q of Y is equal to 
टू वाई प्लस वन वट विल बी द जीरो ओवर हि माइनस वन बाई टू वेरी गुड इट्स माइनस वन बाई टू राइट सो वॉट यू गोइंग टू सी एट विच वैल्यू लाइक वॉट शुड आई पुट ओवर हियर सो दैट आई गेट जीरो सो द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी हैव टू थिंक अबाउट इज वेल इट हैज टू बी अगेटिव नंबर राइट सो वी से वेल i need to that number has to be 1 by 2 first of all so we're going to have 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1 so the thing is then this becomes 1 plus 1 so this has to be minus so then we have minus 1 plus 1 which is equal to 0 now another way to think about this is just simply equate this to 0 well 2y plus 1 this should be equal to 0 so what should be the value of y then we can easily say that y is equal to minus 1 divided by 2 so let me just give you a few more like difficult examples how about how about um, 2x minus 3 okay so this is not difficult it's just simple again after this we're going to look at uh, more hamna can you tell me what is going to be the zero of this polynomial Yes, Hamna. <clears throat> okay, Mridula, can you tell me? I'm three by two. Yes. So x is equal to three by two is a zero of this polynomial. Now I want you guys to check. So I have another. Um, polynomial q of x is equal to x square minus 2x now i want you all to tell me i have four values with me um 0 minus 1 1 and 2 um hamna please confirm if you can hear me I'm not okay. I guess you can't hear me. All right. So yes, ma'am. All right. I'm not just uh, so your work is. I'm not. You're going to take these first two values, zero and minus one, and tell me is zero a is zero a zero of the polynomial q of x? Okay. And is minus one a zero of the polynomial q of x? And then Mridula, you have to tell me one and two. you have to check and tell whether 1 and 2 are zeros of the given polynomial yeah get started so my 1 and 2 are not the zeros of the polynomial okay so mridula is saying that 1 is also not a zero and 2 is also not a zero hamna No, no, no. Two is a zero, so zero is also polynomial. Right. Two is a zero of the polynomial. So, how did we come to that conclusion? We came to that conclusion because we say, well, we're going to put two in this situation. We're going to put two in the place of x, and so it becomes two square minus two times two, and that is nothing but four minus four, which is zero. So, two is a zero of this polynomial. so we say that yes 2 is a zero of this polynomial hamna what about you is zero a zero of this polynomial and is one a zero of this polynomial <clears throat> no ma'am so both of these are not zeros no ma'am okay hamna did you try to put zero in this equation in place of x Let's try to do it together, okay? So I'm going to put zero in place of x. So wherever there is x, I'm substituting it with zero. So zero square minus two times zero. What does this become? Zero minus zero. 
which is equal to zero. So, Hamna, what do you think now? Uh, do you change your answer? Yes, Hamna, just unmute yourself and say a yes or a no. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Hamna, can you tell me how many zeros have we found till now? Of this polynomial? Two. What are those two zeros? <clears throat> yes, Hamna? You can just type it in the chat box if you're not able to unmute x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. Right, very good. x is equal to 0 and 2. Hamna, can you also check whether x is equal to minus 2 is a 0? Ridula, what do yes, you think? Yes, Amna? Okay, x is equal to minus 2 is a 0? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's try to put um, negative 2 into no, this equation. Okay, Ridula says no. No, my answer is 8. Right, so I'm going to put minus 2 over here and square it. Right, so x in the place of x, we're putting minus 2. And then minus 2 times again minus 2. So this becomes 4. And this again becomes plus 4. So we have 8 and it's not 0. Hamna, is it clear? Um, Hamna, is it clear that y minus 2 is not a 0 of this polynomial? Okay, I'm not getting any. Okay, all right. All right, so a few things that we observe from here, I'm just going to point them out. Or let's do this. You guys will tell me one by one whether this is true or false. Uh, a zero of a polynomial um, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be the number zero. True or false? The zero false. of a polynomial. No, false. Very good. No, wait. One sec. It's false? The zero of a it's polynomial false. doesn't have to be zero. That means you guys are saying that the zero of a polynomial should always be zero. But we just saw, we just saw so many cases in which the zero of this, ma it zero can of be, this polynomial ma it may be zero and may not. Yeah, be. exactly. Exactly. So it doesn't have to be zero, right? The zero of a polynomial need not always be zero. It can be zero. It can be any other number. Basically, it can be any real number. So this is a true statement. Or in another, in other words, we can say a zero of the polynomial, a zero of uh, any polynomial can be any real number, right? Any real number. And why are we saying any real number? Because just now we saw that this minus one by two, this is also a zero. So, okay, um, how about we take this example? If I have a polynomial that is x minus root 2 is equal to, or let's say x minus root 2. So this is like p of x. So first of all, is this a polynomial? Yes or no? Hamna Mridula? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is a polynomial, right? Okay. 
So this is a polynomial. This is p of x is equal to x minus root two. What is the zero of this polynomial? One two by one. Sorry, Nidula, I couldn't hear you. M two by one. Two by five. Wait, I'm talking about this. This one. Yes, Hamna. What is the zero of this polynomial? Okay. So basically, what we have done till now is we I'll just take a look at this example over here. Okay. We said. Ma'am, one. Ma'am, ma'am, one point four one four. Okay. No, 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 no. Just a sec. We will come right back to that, Mr. Ra. So, in order to find uh the zero of a polynomial, what we did in every case, basically, what we were doing was another method, but subconsciously we were just equating this thing to zero, and we were saying, well, okay, if I want to find at which value, at what Value of x will this thing be zero? This thing be zero. What I did, I just equated it to zero, and then I found out the value of x. So what we did was just a sec. So we said, well, two x minus three is equal to zero. So two x is equal to three, and then x is equal to three by two. This is basically what we did, right? This is how we found the zero. So what was the first step that you took? The first step was equating the polynomial to zero. The first step was putting p of x equal to zero. That's what we did. So over here also you have to essentially do the same thing. So what are we going to do? We're going to say p of x is equal to zero, or in other words, x minus root two is equal to zero. So now can you tell me what is the value of x? If we want x minus root two to be zero, what should x be? Hmm. Come on, come on. It's okay. Mridula, um, am I audible to you guys? Yeah, Mridula, please uh answer the question. Ma'am, what is the question? The que the question um, is. Ma'am, um, this internet connection problem. Okay. <clears throat> The question is, if we want x minus root two to be equal to zero, what should be the value of x? Yes, Hamna. Ma'am, root two. Exactly, root two. two. Right. If x minus root two is zero, then we just that basically means x is equal to root two. So it's as simple as that. So now again, I'm going to ask you, what is the What is the zero of this polynomial? Yes. Root two. Very good. Yes, Amna. So zero of this polynomial is root two. So root two is a real number, right? It's irrational, but it is real. So zero of this polynomial is root two. So can we say that zero of a polynomial can be any real number? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it can be zero. It can be negative. It can be basically any real number. All right. And then a third point that we noted here <clears throat> was that um, you can see this uh, the linear polynomial. So this is called a linear polynomial. Why is it called a linear polynomial? Let me just write it down. Any ideas, anyone? Okay, first of all, what do you think a linear polynomial means? Hmm. Okay. 
so um basically you have you have these equations right these equations right now you're just writing them in an algebraic form just a sec i have something in the chat box okay no problem ritula <clears throat> okay so right now we're just writing these uh, equations these polynomials in the form of x and we're writing them algebraically but you know um, when you go on to 10th grade you'll see that these mean more than just you know numbers and variables when you plot them on a graph they will have a particular shape so i won't go into into the details of that right now because you guys might get confused so the the point being here is that the polynomials which have the polynomials in which your variable the degree of the polynomial is for example over here we have x plus 2 the degree of this polynomial is equal to 1 right the degree over here is 1 in that case it is called a linear polynomial so um hamna can you tell me is this a linear polynomial It's okay even if you give a wrong answer we will see why the answer is wrong yeah amna no ma'am it's not a linear polynomial okay why is it not a linear polynomial ma'am because the degree is 2 very good so over here the degree is 2 okay how about this one q of y mridula q of y is this a linear polynomial Yes, ma'am. It's a linear polynomial. Very good. Okay, so this is a linear polynomial. Now the thing is, the thing with linear polynomials is that every linear polynomial will have one zero. You can't say that it doesn't have any zero at all. So every linear polynomial will have a zero. Okay, there will be a zero of the polynomial, even if you're not able to find it. It there will be a zero of the polynomial, and secondly there will be only one zero there can't be more than that so in other words we can say that a linear polynomial has exactly one zero always no matter which linear polynomial it is so okay now another point that we note is that take an example of <clears throat> okay take an example of this q of x q of x is equal to x square minus 2x um do you guys recall how many zeros this polynomial had mam 2 right so we can say that a polynomial can have right any uh, a polynomial can have more than one zero right a linear polynomial won't have more than one zero but other types of polynomials like ones which have a degree 2 or ones which have a degree 3 or more uh, degrees higher degrees can have more than one zero uh, is this clear or if there's any doubt then i'll i'll be more than happy to address it no ma'am no doubts no. okay all right so let's do some exercises let's do some questions <laughs> sorry yeah mm -hmm. okay so i want you guys to do this so there's we have um 5x minus 4x square plus 3. So I want Hamna, I want you to find the value of this polynomial when x is equal to 0, and Mridula, I want you to find the value of this polynomial when x is equal to, let's say, minus 1.
ma'am minus six. Minus six. Yes, that is right. Ma'am three. Very good. So p of minus one is equal to just a sec. <clears throat> P of zero is equal to three. Um, are you guys understanding this? Um, the way that I'm writing it. So I said when x is equal to zero. So when R x was zero, instead of x over here, I put zero over here because x is zero. So you guys are understanding this, right? There's no doubt about it. Okay. Now, um, another set of, uh, Hamna, can you do it when x is equal to two? And Mridula, when x is equal to minus 2. Ma'am, negative three. Minus twenty-three. Okay, just a minute. So Hamna is saying negative three, and Dula is saying minus twenty-three. Okay, so all right. Let me just check this. When x is equal to ten, sorry, two, we have this is ten, and this is minus. All right, now let's move on to the next question. So I'm going to give you a question and you have to tell me, I'm going to give you a polynomial. Let's say, okay, P of X is equal to 3X plus 1. Now, okay, Mr. Sir, yeah. So, um, Hamna, I want you to tell me the value when x is equal to minus 1 by 3. And Rudula, I want you to tell me when x is equal to 2 by 3. Ma'am, zero. Very good. Okay. So we have zero. Yes, Mridula? Mridula? Hamna, yours is... Uh, this question now. You have to do this. Mridula, did you find the answer to this one? Ma'am, three. Yes, it is three. Okay, now the next question. Hamna, you have to find it at minus one by root three and Mridula, you have to find it when x is equal to two by root three. Okay, wait, uh, just a sec. So, Hamna and Mridula, um, looking at the previous question that you just did, this one. Um, so can you guys tell me, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you guys tell me what is the zero of this polynomial 3x plus 1? Negative 1 by 3. Very good. So this is the zero of the polynomial. Okay, now you can start on the second one. Ma'am, three. Okay, Rizullah is getting three. Ma'am, negative 2. 
Are you sure about that? Okay, let's check it, Hamna. Let's just check it. So <clears throat> we have minus one by root three, right? So three into minus one by root three whole square minus one. So this becomes uh, when you square this, this becomes because this is negative and the negative the square of a neg negative is positive. So minus one squared becomes plus one, and this becomes root three square is three, right? And this is minus one. So three and three gets cancelled. So essentially we're left with one minus one. And what is that, Hamna? Zero. Yeah. So did you spot your mistake? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. So um, again, here we have p of minus one by root three is equal to zero. So now, what is the zero of this polynomial? Negative one by root three. Very good. All right. Let's move on to another question. Okay, now can you find the zero of the polynomial p of x is equal to 5x? Ma'am, 1 by 5. Okay, Hamna, what do you think? I'm no, ma'am, 0, 0. Right, so what happens if we put x is equal to 1 by 5? It becomes 5 into 1 by 5, right? And this is equal to 1. So this is not a zero. Zero is the zero of this polynomial. So zero is a zero of this polynomial. Okay. Um, let's do another one. Um, how about um, okay? How about let's say five x minus ten. I'm 10 by 5. And what is 10 by 5? I'm 0 of this polynomial. What is 10 by 5? If I write 10 by 5, what is this equal to? Can you simplify it? I'm 2. Right. So if p of x is equal to this, then p of 2 is 0. Therefore, 2 is a 0 of this polynomial. So I hope this is clear to you, both of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, uh, Hamna, you said something in the starting about zero polynomial. What did you say? I think that time Ridula wasn't there. Every real number is a zero of the zero polynomial. Every real number is a zero of the zero polynomial. That's right. Okay. So, um, Hamna, can you explain that to Mridula? <coughs> Sorry. Yes? Okay. Mridula, what is the zero polynomial? Ma'am, it, uh, ma it is a real number. Okay, so zero polynomial basically means p of x is equal to zero. So if, uh, let's say I'm multiplying this with x, okay? Or it could be x square or whatever. So what happens is if you want this to be equal to zero, you can put any number in place of x. You can put any number at all in place of x. It can be 1, right? x can be minus 10. x can be 1 by 4. The value of x can be anything, but your p of x, when your uh, p of x is equal to 0, uh, p of x is equal to 0, that will always come out to be 0. Why? Because this is a 0 polynomial. So we can say that the 0 of a zero polynomial. And once again, what is a zero polynomial? Zero polynomial basically means zero into x. 
okay or you can just write zero so p of x is equal to zero zero of a zero polynomial can be any real number Okay, now let's um, let's get doing a few questions again. I don't know. This is really supposed to take. <clears throat> so. Uh, am I able to see my screen? Yeah. So I think we did it till here and now we have to talk about this. Yeah. So we just did this one. Zero of the zero polynomial is any real number. All right. Um, okay, ninth one. Come on. Ma'am, minus one, ma'am, minus five by two. Yes, that's right. It's going to be minus five by two. So, Hamna, is it clear to you? It's going to be minus five by two? Oops. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, tenth one. One of the zeros of the polynomial 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 is... Yes. Any ideas? Okay, how, how are you guys trying to solve it? How are you solving it? Hmm? Okay. Ma'am, I just putting the value when that is given in the options. Okay, just a second. Okay, so um, were you able to find any of them? Yes, Thamna. Mam B. Mam no Mam C. 
Okay, you're saying C. All right. Hamna, what about you? Hamna, you can just type it in the chat box. Hamna, are you there? Okay, so I'm just, let's just uh, go to the um, answer. Mridula, you said minus one by two. You said C, right? Yes. yes okay, sir. let's try to, let's try to put C into the equation. Ma'am, no, ma'am, B. I want to change my answer, it's B. <laughs> okay, so first it was B and then it became C and now it's B again. So, yeah, that's right. The answer is B. Um, which was 1 by 2. Why? Because when you put b into the equation, and I don't remember what it was, I think it was 2x square minus 7x, I'm sorry, plus 7x minus 4. I think it was this. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you put 1 by 2 into this, you have 2 into 1 by 2 whole square, plus 7 into 1 by 2 minus 4. So that becomes 2 by 4, which is essentially 1 by 2 plus 7 by 2 minus 4, which is 8 by 2 minus 4, sorry, 8 by 2 minus 4, which is 0. Hamna, is this clear? I'm still not getting a response from Hamna. Okay, so um, the, in the next class we will start a new topic which is the remainder theorem and it isn't anything uh, too huge it isn't anything too scary it's basically I'll just give you a small introduction so it's called the remainder theorem <clears throat> all right so let's just take any two numbers Rudula, can you give me any two numbers under under 30 give me any two numbers under 30 Ma'am, 26 and 10. Okay, 26 and 10. So, if I say 26 divided by 10, let's let's start dividing it, okay? So, <clears throat> I have 26 and I'm dividing, dividing it by 10 and we're doing it the traditional way, the long division method. So, Mridula, just dictate and I will write it down. What should I do next from here? Ma'am, first we divide 10 by 20. Ma'am, 26. Ma'am, by 20. 10. Okay. So, uh, Mirdula and Hamna, both of you. So, what we do first is like we have a 2 over here. And then we have, um, we have, this becomes 20. Because 10 into 2 is 20. And then we're left with 6 over here. 6. And so the remainder is basically six, just a sec. So the remainder is six. And now we know that, well, six won't go by 10 anymore because 10 into anything can't be six. So if we want, we can like put a, you know, decimal over here and do all that. But right now we're just talking about whole numbers. Okay. So now, Mridula, 26 is called what? What is it called when we're dividing? Hamna, would you like to answer? It's called the dividend, remember? You guys remember you studied this in like uh, smaller classes? Does anyone yes, remember this? Yeah, okay. Um, what is 10 called? Yes, Hamna? 
divisor mam divisor very good so it's called the divisor and uh, humna what is two called quotient very good quotient uh i messed it up just a sec and then what is six called the remainder a uh, remainder very good thanks okay so essentially what we see is basically if you take a look at this 26 divided by 10 this is nothing but so we can say that 26 is equal to or we can say that 26 divided by 10 is equal to 20 plus 6 right and 20 is nothing but 2 into 2 sorry 2 into 10 so we can say we can say let me just rewrite it so i can say that 26 divided by just a sec divided by 10 is equal to 2 which is the quotient into 10 which is again the divisor plus 6 which is the remainder so what we have here is this is one way of writing it okay another way we can uh, say the same thing is basically you multiply the whole equation you multiply the whole equation with 10 so the lhs also if you multiply it with multiply it with 10 this 10 gets cancelled and on the rhs okay just a sec yeah so what we're going to do now is we're going to say wait one sec uh you guys are not even like pointing out the mistake over here are you guys like sleeping or what so it was just 26 not 26 divided by 10 see because 26 divided by 10 is going to be this thing so we can write it like this okay and this is one way of writing it and another way of writing it would be if i divide the whole thing by 10 this would be 26 just a second this would be 26 divided by 10 which is i'm dividing the whole equation with 10 okay this is equal to 2 uh, just a sec plus 6 by 10 what have i done basically i took this equation and i divided the whole thing by 10 so what we have is you can take a look at this again so we have 26 divided by 10 this is equal to you can write this as 20 plus 6 by 10 right we can write it like this basically what i've done is 26 i have written it like this and then since you have it uh, in a fraction form like that you can just separate the two fractions you can say it is 20 by 10 plus 6 by 10 okay and 20 by 10 is nothing but 2 and then this is 6 by 10 so this is another way of writing the same thing this is known as this or uh the first equation we can these are both interchangeable we can call this the remainder theorem okay so this is something that uh, we've been studying since our earlier classes and we're going to now see how um to apply the remainder theorem in polynomials so it's nothing very difficult polynomials we're just going to treat them like numbers and we're going to see how uh, the whole thing comes about so are there any doubts in today's class except for remainder theorem we, because we're going to touch that in the next class so any doubt about zeros of a polynomial no i have no doubts okay hamna no doubts ma'am Okay all right so thank you class let's meet in the next class good night ma'am okay bye thank you